February marks Black History Month, a tribute to the African American men and women who have made a significant impact and difference to our society. However, that explanation is just scratching the surface. In 2018, we highlighted our local elected officials and government administration in Douglasville and Douglas County. For 2019, we are focusing on key significant members of the community who have and continue to play a vital role in the development of our community. I'm Rick Martin, and welcome to this special edition of This is Douglas County. My heroes in Douglas County, the first one was John W. Stewart, who was a principal of Stewart Middle School, for which the school was named. He hired me in 1964. I remained there until 1986. My second hero was Jane C. Williams, clerk of Superior Court, who hired me in the Superior Court office. Well, you start talking about heroes of black history. I first go back to say who most people say is the most prolific speaker, and that's Dr. King. We just celebrated his birthday, but also without uh, people like Jose Williams, you know? Jose Williams was like a general that worked on side Dr. King. He was one of my biggest heroes because he kept order. He did the hard work. And then I gotta remember Malcolm X because he taught people how to fight back. Uh, maybe it wasn't always the best way, uh, where people look at history and say Malcolm X was a uh, heartliner uh, and a lot of violence, but I believe that sometimes you have to stand up and fight for yourself. So you had to ask me about three heroes. I would say Dr. King, uh, along with Dr. King, his general, Jose Williams, and I would say Malcolm X. Malcolm X was a big influence in my life. Well, my first hero would be my father because of all he did and uh, how he sacrificed so much for his family and he had a disease that no one knew anything about at the time. He had, uh, he died with Crohn's disease, ileitis. And uh, the days he went to work when he could hardly stand up straight, the things he did, the things he taught me, he's obviously my, my most important and my first hero. There are others, I mean, I've, I've always been a big fan of Hank Aaron, just because of what he went through. I uh, didn't really know Jackie Robbins, but I got to, to see Hank Aaron many times and read stories about all the things he went through to be able to do what he did, and to me, he's still the home run king. And of course, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. for what he did and what he suffered through without uh, complaining, going to jail, doing all the things he did, I've always held him in high esteem. My heroes are anybody that could uplift give positive attitude and feedback. And I get that experience from my first grade teacher, Miss Wyatt, uh, from my family and from a friend that is um, uh, Yolanda Millender. I have several heroes and to single out one, I would be doing a disservice to all the other ones, uh, but Mainly my heroes are the men and women, black and white, Hispanic, uh, people who marched for freedom back in the 1960s when I was growing up. You know, I know Dr. King led all of that, but the, behind the leaders there are men and women, and young people that spearheaded uh, the charge to help change and move our country to a better place. I guess my greatest hero would have, would have to be my mom, uh, Frances Danley. She, um, she was just a born entrepreneur, educator. At that time, they only went to the 11th grade, but just a brilliant person and kind of directed me early on to believe in God and trust in Him. So, of course, he was always one of my favorite heroes. But my mom was just that person that you can always go to and get directions in case in any type of uh, crisis or whatever was going on in your life. The biggest change I've seen in this community is the 
population uh, changes. When I first moved here, blacks made up less than 7% of the entire population. There were very few uh, in my school. Uh, there were only two males at the time. And we were the only school in the county, so it was a really big school at the time. Lithia had not opened, it was in the process of opening. That's just the logistics, the size of the town. Um, I remember when Highway 5 was merely just a two-lane road and a service station at the top and a bunch of trees and a few houses. And now it's a whole lot of pavement and a whole lot of cars. Well, I've seen it, the community grow uh, from an economic standpoint. Uh, I've seen the demographics change and I've seen um, uh, what the people was marching for in the 60s, my heroes uh, in the 60s. I've seen what their work has accomplished uh, here today. So that's why I'm sitting here as the chief of police. You don't have to look far to um, see all of the changes that have taken place in Douglas County. Uh, and the fact that I'm here is an indication of some of the changes that took place. Um, as you know, I was the first, first minority to become a member of the Douglasville uh, City Council. And at that time, you didn't have a mayor, nobody else, I was the only one. And later, other councilmen came. And now when you look around the county, you can see that the governmental structures in Douglas County reflect closer to the population than what it did back at the time when I came, uh, I came onto the council. Um, it's been a lot of changes, and sometimes when we talk about changes, especially as it affects minorities, we always think that the changes took place simply because of the minorities. But I tell people that in order to have a positive change, it has to be a collaboration between the community. And that's what we've had in Douglas County is that the community has co uh, collaborated. And even as things changed, you know, it was done together. And that is the only way you can have a successful community. And I think Douglas County has changed in a positive direction. I've seen um, a lot of diversity. Um, I've seen a lot of growth here. Um, when I first moved here, it was very rural, and now I feel like it's, I'm back in Atlanta. It's a part of Atlanta now. Well, some of the changes are, number one, traffic, and I know that doesn't mean anything, but because our county was so small, with very few paved roads, no red lights. Now we have many red lights, we have paved roads, but the traffic is so much so that some days you want to just stand on the side and give everybody a ticket for speed. I guess one of the biggest changes, if you want to talk about a recent change, I would say watching the dynamics of politics. You know, for 16 years we had Sheriff Phil Miller. Well, for 16 years we had uh, Commissioner Tom Worthen, uh, Chairman Tom Worthen. And then you had Mickey Thompson was the mayor uh, for, I think, three or four terms. And you look at how the dynamics have changed with leadership. Uh, you know, you got Chairman Jones, uh, first African-American uh, chairman of the county. Uh, but to go back a little further than that, you got uh, Mayor Rochelle Robinson, became one of the first black uh, mayor of Douglasville. Uh, and then now you have a lot of firsts. You have uh, Sheriff Tim Pounds. Uh, so you saw the dynamics change over the years with politics, uh, how different parties and different ethnic groups have, have risen to power. And when I use the word power, I mean uh, agent for change. My favorite memories are family. I'm a, a family person, and um, but the the one memory that stands out is when I opened the salon back in '95. It it was the second black salon um, in operation in Douglas County, and we have uh, never closed. We've always um, been in operation for the last 24 years, and always been fully staffed. Uh, it's just been a blessing to be able to say that we're still standing. I would like to say how proud I am of 
the daughter that I did pass it on to because things that I had visions of, I can see her fulfilling those visions with her ideas now. And she's taking the salon to a whole nother level and I'm just super proud of her. My husband and I can say that we truly can look back and see that all of this is, is, is well worth it. And I feel like I've left a legacy. Some of my favorite memories, I was talking about this the other day, a lot of people won't know about this, but in 1984-85 basketball season, Lithia boys and Douglas County boys played an eight overtime game at Lithia. I remember how tired I was after the game. It was just an exciting thing to see. And really, really exciting for me is the Olympians we've had that came out of this county. Uh, Elena, I remember coaching against her in basketball and track. And uh, Christy, I remember coaching against her in track. And it's pretty exciting to know somebody you know to be an Olympic uh, medalist. And I also, I had a, a girl that played for me, Kasha Terry was the first, on the first ever women's McDonald's All-American team. And I got to go to New York and see her play. And she was WBCA All-American and I got to see her play over in Connecticut. That was pretty exciting. Some of the memories are the students that went to Stewart Middle School, being able to talk to them now as adults and enjoying life and still being a part of Douglas County. They have made me feel very special and as always, I always wanted to be a servant for the people and now I feel like I've had the opportunity to meet and greet some of the most important people in Douglas County due to the fact that I stayed here and I have done my job. Here's one of my memories is uh, uh, when I uh, integrated the schools here in Douglas County, I went to change from an African-American uh, elementary school and to a, uh, to a uh, mixed school. Uh, in Winston Elementary, and I, at that time, I uh, uh, met the uh, a good friend of mine, and still my friend today, uh, Mike Mitchell. Because before then, all of Douglas County was segregated, and I, uh, I, re I still remember uh, going up to uh, Winston Elementary School, and, and he's one of several uh, young men kids that I met uh, outside of my race, and I still know him today. So that's a great memory in keeping with uh, the heroes what brought me here today. I was thinking about something where we used to have to go back and fight for to be represented in certain positions and some of the encounters I had with law enforcement just growing up, you know, a simple traffic stop and you could be kind of, uh, I remember the state trooper just kind of pushed me in the stomach and almost hit me with no revocation, you know, no provoking, not, not, nothing that I provoked him to do that. But now when you look back and you have people in law enforcement and these kind of things that you can communicate with, they know you and they know your community and so I'm appreciative of those kinds of things, but um, just memories of the school system becoming integrated and being able to do that successfully. Uh, memories of uh, a lot of the smaller sports teams that we had who used to play semi-pro baseball and these kinds of things. You know, more in that direction and seeing the growth in, in religion and in our church and those things. Those would be my favorite memories and um, not directly related to work, uh, but that those would be my favorite memories. Oh, wow. Uh, I would say watching our parks and recreation uh, grow in our area because that was little places for families to go and could congregate and have a great time outside the home, but then to, to see the different parks and recreations uh, develop and to watch how the mall brought new life to our community and just to see the different increase in uh, just the family units that we had built. I remember when I moved here, Chapel Hill was a dark road. And to look at Chapel Hill now, it's a great uh, place for business, uh, commerce. Chapel Hill was, I mean, it was a dark country road. And to see that the way it transformed, uh, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm always 
Yeah, I'm always excited to see growth. And I think over the years, uh, with, with the change in politics, you know, with the way our community changed, you know, the different heroes we have now, you know, because even with the heroes, uh, it changed from Dr. King uh, to people like uh, Judge Caldwell, who has fought very hard to see rights of, of local people get, get the rights that they deserve. I've seen over the years how the, the economic uh, change, uh, even from the north side, how it's changed on the north side, because I've been a part of Stewart Middle School for 21 years. I've showed up at that campus every Friday morning for 21 years and watching that school, how it's been an anchor to the community. And with the new uh, expansion on the 92 bypass, how that's opening up so much more on the north side. Uh, so when you talk about heroes, my heroes have changed. When you talk about uh, things I remember, I remember when Douglasville was just dark, it had no real infrastructure, and now it's a robust city, it's a robust county. Uh, we got some of the larger businesses here that would never thought about coming to Douglas County, uh, such as Google and uh, other bigger companies that are here. Uh, so I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm impressed with how we have grown as a community. I'm excited how we have future growth coming. And I see that uh, the political uh, environment is, is for those who really want to serve the community. There's opportunities out there for people to make a difference. And I'm so excited to see how our community has grown and matured over the years.